John Irving is one of America's great writers, a literary phenomenon. His 14 books have made him a worldwide celebrity. And the Oscar goes to John Irving for the Cider House Rule. He's even won an Oscar for his storytelling. Well, you must be trying to get me to reconsider my day job. A master novelist, he's known for his layered storylines, zany characters, and for tackling some of the most divisive issues of our time. I want to thank the Academy for this honor to a film on the abortion subject. For years, he's been calling Canada his second home. Now, disenfranchised with the politics of Trump and what he calls an increasingly angry, ignorant, and misinformed American electorate. Irving recently, along with 83 others, chose to pledge allegiance to Canada. Welcome to your citizenship ceremony. Oh, to find out more about his decision on becoming a Canadian citizen, I met up with John Irving at his writing studio in Toronto. Thank you for having us, letting us come. Appreciate it. Oh, more than welcome. See, that's already very Canadian, that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm still learning. <laughs> How does it feel? I, I know you're married to a Canadian. You've been living here on and off for, for a long time. But does it feel different? It does feel different, but it, it's, it's mainly both gratifying and moving because it's something that I have thought about for a long time. It's a move kind of like the trajectory of my novels that, that um, <laughs> takes a lot of homework and a lot of time. <laughs> In fact, in fact, the process of becoming a Canadian citizen is very approximate to how long it takes me generally to, to, to write a novel. But it's worth it, just like your novel. No, I, well, I hope, thank you for saying so. Um, it, it certainly feels worth it. Was there something about the, the current state of, of politics of the United States that, that was part of that decision making? Not at all. No. I've said to my friends in the U.S. and and here in 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 Canada that this is a love story, not a political story. Uh, I'm here because uh, I met and and fell in love with a Canadian woman, and and she's from here. Mm -hmm. And this is a very conscious choice. I want to live here. I love it here. Um, if anything, I feel somewhat remiss. Uh, uh, to leave my birth country at a time when I feel so critical of it. So how do you view your home country right now and the state it's in? Well, I'm anxious, uh, very anxious about um, uh, what happens now. I'm very critical of my uh, fellow liberal Democrats. Six and a half million Democrats who voted for uh, Mr. Obama uh, in 2012 did not show up. Mm -hmm for Mrs. Clinton in 2016. I hold um, my fellow Democrats who would not support Mrs. Clinton accountable for the awful man in the White House. Um, Mr. Trump had fewer votes in the 2016 election than Romney had in 2012, even fewer than McCain in 2008. He needed the help of Democrats who didn't vote in order to be elected. And so I'm, I'm very much on that bandwagon. I'm disgusted by the craven, sycophantic Republicans who have all, like sheep, lined up in lockstep with Mr. Trump. I wish all the Democratic candidates running for nomination would vow right now that they will 100% endorse whichever one of them wins the nomination. I'd like to hear that. Um, because that's what went wrong the last yeah. time. And Mr. Trump's narcissism, his vulgarity, uh, his brazen awfulness may be new. D don't feel you have to hold back or anything. <laughs> See, I knew, I knew you'd have things to say. Well, of course I do. You know, I've, I've, I've also said here, hmm. I think I, it, it's arguable at my age if, if I will ever live here long enough to feel as comfortable being critical mm. of 
my new country. Mm. I, I think that's a citizen's responsibility in every democracy. You have to participate. Yes. And in order to participate, you have to observe, you have to pay attention, you have to take the pains to learn, mm -hmm. keeping abreast and informed and engaged um, uh, politically. And boy, does that ever begin with voting. Does it make it harder watching uh, the United States now, knowing that some of the very things you care so much about, um, women's rights, uh, sexual equality, um, that those specific things are, are under attack. Well, you're, 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 you're right to say that. I, I think the subject of sexual politics, especially of sexual hatred, sexual intolerance, uh, not just intolerance of sexual um, minorities, though chiefly that, um, but uh, intolerance of sexual differences. Mm -hmm. If people can treat women as if we are sexual minorities. Imagine how much worse they feel entitled um, to treat gay men, mm -hmm. lesbian women, and transgender men or women. Mm -hmm. yeah. That hasn't changed. Is there something um, you would want Canada to sort of watch out for? You know, one of our biggest challenges is living so close to the United States for all sorts of reasons. And there's always the possibility that what we see in the United States bleeds over. In fact, it probably has. So is there anything that you would want this country to be wary of? I, I just think we all need to be uh, aware that, that with uh, our diversity and with um, our living in an increasingly global world, we, we must resist the opportunity to demonize and put mm -hmm. down others. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, where the ugliness really comes. Um, my old friend, Margaret Atwood, uh, uh, congratulated me on my citizenship, and she sent me a pair of Handmaid's Tale socks, <laughs> um, which I'm very happy with. Um, <laughs> Uh, seems appropriate. I mean, it seems very appropriate, <laughs> uh, you know. You, you almost came very close to being able to vote in our election, <laughs> but you missed it. Yeah. <laughs> you would vote, though, in the next election. I, you look I, forward to I, it. I, I look forward to it. I, yeah. I, I want to get being here right. What is your favorite thing about Canada? And you can't say your wife. Because that's a given. Okay. All right. That's, uh, Just to save you that one. I get the sense here, not that people never get abused or ever get hurt, um, but when people are abused or do get hurt or treated unfairly, uh, I, I get the sense that there is a kind of public outrage about that. And, and I think uh, there, there should be. Okay, let me end on this. People will just will kill me if I don't ask you if, if the book is almost done. Like, that's probably the worst question to ask an author. I began this novel on Christmas Eve uh, 2016. If I were to finish it this Christmas Eve, which I won't, um, <laughs> that, would be the, that would be the fastest novel I ever wrote. Right. So I'm hoping uh, I will uh, come to the end of this manuscript um, uh, sometime um, in the end of the winter and early spring. That's my, my hope. It, 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 I'm not going to hold you to this. No. <laughs> it, uh, alas, I probably won't hold myself to it either, but th that's, my, that's my... It already looks very long. <laughs> yes, and I, I'm considering that. Yeah. Mr. Irving, uh, thank you. What thank a pleasure. You. Thank so you nice very much. Thank you.